believe it or not, I didn't intend for this to become an actual series, but I'm going to continue to do these critiques. This time it's going to be spent with more emphasis on the sequel moving forward of the Zeitgeist rather than Addendum, which, in my opinion, is a very Chomsky-esque piece of writing, and this one surpasses it, not just in being a little bit more vulgar and entertaining, but also in it just being less of a fantasy fritz. Fantasy and fritz. Now, one the first critique I have is that they present that scientists are better alternative than political philosophers, politicians, and religious people in general, religious, religious leaders, writings, and all that stuff. And that's a non sequitur, but more importantly, it's not true, because they're trying to imply that scientists are objective. As you know, science involves from funeral to funeral, and many of the times, scientists always, almost always overwhelmingly put their own ideology for their tests and bias. That's why it took so many years for us to uh, take in the atomist theory that Democritus placed forward. We had thousands of years of pre believing Aristotle's theory of the four elements. Instead of these little small clusters that build up into matter. Although Democritus wasn't perfect and it's evident in the fact that the atom isn't indivisible. You can break it down further. He also believes that all systems should be put to test. That stuff like elevator capacity. How much weight can an elevator withstand? You can't just use the Pythagorean theorem and all these other mathematical tools to test out that shit. You have to actually place some weight on it. And with this, I feel like Okay, it's partially true, but I think that it buries the nature of deductive logic, and not everything should be inductive and working backwards. But I respect the fact that he says that you should do all this math and science and then test it out. At least it's an upgrade, for what most people say. Another thing is that, let's see, so I have this long list, it has about 12 of these. Okay, so, Fresco likes to put this alternative of there being ownership versus strategic access. That is to say that ownership should be replaced with something called strategic access and that's that people should have something only as long as it's necessary for the purpose of it. That is to say that if you're not going to use your car then why you have it it should, and there should be like a way of, well the best way to describe it is the way it's described in the movie. Think about it like libraries. When you get a book from a library, sure it's free, but it's only for as long as you need it. Usually if it's there for too long in your possession, then you'll be charged with fees. And this stuff does go to your record, by the way. And this will be applied to stuff like transportation and other stuff that is basically used devoid of any strategy. And I don't think it's a fully fleshed out concept in the sense that it takes away the idea that ownership is just another protocol. And that if you really want to avoid the overconsumption of scarce resources, 
instead of having paper which is relatively decent in renewability but it isn't going to be able to catch up as our populations and consumption increases you should have an alternative of other much quicker to renew resources like for example I know that you can actually make paper from elephant shit it doesn't smell as bad as you think it does and although I don't think it's more renewable than paper that's just an example of how there's a lot of renewability and sometimes there's stuff that simply too common too quick to renew for us to burn away for at least decades it'll be long before we're able to consume past the renewability of certain resources and that's the way you're supposed to think it isn't destroy the concept of ownership simply because a lot of resources are being consumed excessively at the moment next comes the idea of ideal cities which fresco puts out that cities are a great place to foster a lot of interaction between large populations and fresco like me is a new yorker like rothbard is a new yorker and we all know the advantages and disadvantages to a city system and i can surely tell you that cities aren't for everyone they truly aren't if he was gonna make this big complexity for just cities you should realize that some people like smaller clusters of interactions within the Dunbar units I'm one of those people I actually see the advantage of it cuz whenever I'm in smaller areas like maybe suburban areas which are marginally less packed I feel a lot more tranquil and less fixated on anxiety same thing for fringe elements and a couple of other guys in fact even Gitaoist or Gitaoist says that he believes that that's because there's too much psychic energy being condensed to one place that might bother some people anyway okay is there anything worth mentioning because I could throw in one or two things but I want this to be below the 15 minute mark preferably below the 10 minute mark or 11 minute mark okay let's see now fresco rejects the concept of individualism and capitalism and now this is me actually going into socio-economic theory because a lot of times he focuses on private property and he confuses it with personal property so whenever you see him speak about private property until he brings up money and the systematic use of currency we have now it's mostly him discussing personal property. And that's where the concept of individualism comes. He says that with guys like Smith who say that we're innately individualistic that it counteracts the fact that we aren't individually individualistic at all and that we're a little bit more collectivized as people or as his last movie says we're more symbiotic personally I think that that's a false division because in my opinion you could be individualistic and still live a symbiotic lifestyle where you feel that you're a part of a whole simply because you're a 
acting according to your own personal preferences. This is why small right churches can still have that collectivist-esque attitude where they're all knowing each other and they're all semi-symbiotic. Or as symbiotic as it can be, relatively speaking. He does critique the fact that Smith actually compliments. Well, it wasn't Smith. It was a two treatises, treatises of government by. Sorry, it's 3:32 a.m. by John Locke, where he actually compliments the idea of money, and that's something that I can actually go with. It does make a little sense that that be strange. What else? Next is something that isn't in my list, but it's near the end. Now with Fresco, he tends to have these dramatic beginning sequences and ending sequences in his films that are overtly romanticized. And I don't think he directs his own films, I didn't check the credits, but props on that guy because it just seems so ridiculous. Now in the ending, Fresco implies that he doesn't know necessarily how he can push for his ideal lifestyle with all this currency issues and that we're wasting more resources and pushing ourselves into more economic decline due to currency and he says that he can only hope that once the problem gets worse that people will rise up and you see an ending sequence which this is the beginning of 2011 this film was released it matches a lot of what happens later in 2011 with the Occupy Wall Street movement where they're in front of these big Wall Street-esque marketplaces around New York and it definitely looks like New York especially the stereotypical 42nd Street Madison Square Garden shit mixed in with some aspects of Wall Street itself and there's this big crowd of people that easily outnumbers all the police officers and SWAT teams and that are guarding Wall Street and they start throwing their money over to the Wall Street guys and I understand that they're in a desperate situation and this is like this big thing that this film is implying this is happening all over the world in this giant dramatic ending sequence but I don't really even when I'm not trying to take this as literally as possible let's be honest even a situation slightly and contextually similar to this isn't going to happen no one's just gonna drop their money it's very inefficient to have the kind of money we have now personally in terms of investment storing money and even using it as a medium of exchange I have more better alternatives than fractional reserve banking. But then again, there were a lot of banking issues before fractional reserve banking. Then again, there are different variations of central banking. But I don't really think anyone's going to do anything like sacrifice their money because they know that the currency system is corrupt or something of that nature. People are simply too pussy no matter what the situation happens to be. And if they do, then worst case scenario is not only are we going to be involuntarily forced to give money to a certain group, but to get money from a certain group. And that's kind of what's happening now that we're forced to have these bank accounts for... Our money to be fractionally reserved and us to gain some interest while storing our money 
we're we think we're actually storing our money, but we're not getting it perfectly. It's not being efficiently stored. It's being dangerously stored. A portion of it's being used. We might have less or more, and it's ridiculous. All in all, I definitely have a lot more to say. I feel like when they go into more serious economics that especially with the invisible hand cost efficiency cyclical consumption and planned obsolescence quality lowers violence and all this other shit that really I could go on for days but I'm gonna save all of that for maybe a part four now if you're part of the Venus Project zeitgeist movement and all this other shit then I'm not dissing you, I'm not dissing your ideology it's not really an ism and it actually says it isn't an ism but there's a lot of people that cling to it like an ideology to help them learn more about economics and things of that nature but in all honesty just like any institution with an ideology, any organization, any system, any entity, there's going to be some flaws. And I'm going to pick up some of these flaws. I like the ones that are abstract and philosophical because I'm an abstract and philosophical pensive thinker, but either way, it's not meant to harm anybody. At least I hope it isn't. Because I might try to harm the people I don't like. To a high degree. Alright, so this has been Mr. Waka7, and you can all suck my dick. Ah, oh, stupid.